Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Opening the Vault and today I am going through a abridged version of my natural hair journey and how I plan on growing my hair back out in 2024 and beyond. So this is going to be a longer sit down video so I will put the timestamps over here. Um, I'm going to start with talking about like my history of length retention and how I had very low length retention to begin with. I will be going over the products that I've used, the routines that I did and didn't use as I went through, you know, my hair care journey over these years. And I will talk about the products I used, but I do want to specify that it's not any particular brand or any particular product from a brand that helps me achieve better length retention. It's more about how I used those products. And I'm not an ingredients person. I'm never gonna get on anybody about ingredients. Um, but there are certain things that I know my hair likes that I've included in my, you know, product journey and in my hair care journey that I try to look out for. So I will be talking about all of that in this video. Like I said, timestamps over here, timestamps in the description. I'll also try to like type out a lot of what I said in the description just in case you're more of a reader. Um, so yeah, let's get started. At the beginning of my natural hair journey, there was no possible way for me to sit here and tell you what I used. There was no way for me to sit here and tell you why I used what I used or the benefits that I was seeing from using what I used. All the way at the beginning of my natural hair journey, I had no routine. I'm gonna try and put some pictures up. As at the beginning of my natural hair journey, I had no routine. I didn't have certain products that I went back to. I don't even think I was deep conditioning or even conditioning. I might've been conditioning, I'm not sure. But I had nothing, I had no routine. I was seeing at most an inch of length of tension a year. There's, when I was going through my pictures, I have a natural hair journey um, video on my channel, I'll link that in the eye. But there was a time where I cut all my hair off and this is what my hair looked like. Two years later, when I graduated high school, this is what my hair looked like. I had not trimmed it in that time. I hadn't done anything I hadn't cut my hair in that time and I had retained maybe two inches in two years. The longest my hair has ever been when I was a kid was not very long. I, and my hair didn't, you know, wasn't down. I never measured length. I measured like my afro. The longest my hair was when I was like growing up was maybe an afro like, like that big, like that big stretched. Cause I would comb out my hair. Um, I grew up wearing braids. I had a, my mom gave me a relaxer when I was maybe six or six, like preschool, like preschool, kindergarten was the last time I had a relaxer. So that's like way in the past. In high school, beginning of college, no routine whatsoever. I would shampoo my hair. I have no idea what conditioner I was using. I know for a fact I didn't deep condition. My hair was always dry. It was always fall, like I would take a shower the whole shower floor would be covered in like little Cheerio curls, little like pieces of hair. I had so much breakage. 2013 is when I officially started my natural hair journey in the way that I was doing my own hair and I was purchasing my own products. So 2013, it is currently 2023. So 10 long years of natural hair journey officially that I have photo evidence of. Two years of high school and I had very little to show for it. Going into college, I was using the Black Girl Long Hair um, Shea Butter, um, Cocoa Butter, any of their butters to do twist outs on my hair. My hair was way softer, way softer. I had the cutest little hair. Like, I was finally starting to retain length and seeing it in my hair. And I was really happy and my hair was so cute. I had the cutest little styles. I would take a nap in between classes, get up, zhuzh my hair, zhuzh my little afro, and go to class. It was fantastic. My hair was doing so well. Very, like still just a little bit of length retention, but I loved my hair and I loved how soft it was. I don't remember my routine, 
but I did shampoo my hair and I used black girl long hair like hair butter on my hair to do twist outs so I would be twisting my hair up every single night and so over time I started getting more involved on campus um, I played rugby in high school and I played rugby in college and so because I would be I would work out once or twice a day I'd have games I'd work out after game before games after games whatever and I would basically co-wash my hair because it was faster. So I would put Aussie Moist Conditioner in my hair, detangle it, get in the shower, and rinse it out, and then go style my hair. That was basically all I did. And as my hair started to get longer and longer, I would blow it out to see the length, but also to put it in puffs so that it can kind of be like out of the way because I had no idea how to style my hair. Then after a while I had a really bad experience with crochet braids where they just completely took out my edges but I started to do my own hair. So I used to do my own braids and twists all through college and that was kind of my go-to. Basically just protective styling all the time. Protective styling was really helpful for me in college because I literally did not have the time to do my hair and I didn't have the time to figure out how to do my hair because Let's say I took out my braids Wednesday night. Thursday night, I had an event to go to. Or that weekend, I had a game to go to. Like, I didn't have time to mess around with my hair because I had no idea what it would look like. And I had events to go to. Um, I just, I didn't know what to do with my hair. I never straight, I do not straighten my hair. I blew it out a lot, but I basically just wore puffs, afros, and I did braids and twists all through college. I didn't really know what to do with my hair outside of puffs. Now, I did see a lot of length retention and I would blow out my hair all the time to see the length. I was really happy with it. Um, I was starting to build a better routine. I was using shampoos. I still don't think I was using deep conditioner at the time, but I was starting to retain length. Something that's really interesting is I tried to go ginger. And I have a picture of my hair after I tried to go ginger and my hair basically still looks black. And even though the color didn't take, I still had color damage. So I tried really hard to find a way to take care of my hair, even though it was like as it was damaged. And that led me into more protein based products. And that's what led me to Afrigy two minute, Recon two minute reconstructorizer and deep conditioners. The first deep conditioner I ever used that I remember buying with my own money and using was the Crece Pelo deep conditioner. When I started using that, I started seeing what I thought was significant hair growth. What it was, was hair retention. Because like I said, I had not deep conditioned my hair prior to that. So one of the best things that I've ever done for myself was deep conditioning. Now, a lot of people are already deep conditioning. This isn't new or different or groundbreaking in any way but for me at that time it really showed me the difference between conditioning my hair and deep conditioning my hair with protein because i needed it when my hair was black when i was using box color now that my hair is bleached like protein has always been front and center in my length retention so as time went on i was growing my hair i was doing whatever i was doing in college and then it got to 2020 so the year before that I'll talk a little bit about 2019 um, I was a double major at the time I had a lot going on I was starting to try different styles over like summer break and winter break and I was like I need something to do to my hair when I don't have my braids and so I would try like twist outs braid outs and then I started to see this thing called like wash and goes, and I was like, what is that? I had never ever put gel in my hair, ever. I had never used edge control. Well, I use edge control on like my braids, but I had never put edge control on my hair when my hair was out. And so I started to mess around with wash and goes, cause I was like, okay, if I can just like wet my hair and like throw some gel in it, that'll be cool. That's not how it worked to begin with. I started my wash and go journey i don't know if i want to call it that but i started experimenting with wash and goes and different gels 
I will put a picture of the first successful wash and go and the only reason I say it's successful is because I was able to sleep and then wake up the next day and have my hair still look like that which is kind of what we all want from our styles like you don't want to do a perm rod set go to bed and then wake up and the perm rod set is non-existent right so that was like my first successful wash and go but my hair was so uneven because I never wore my hair out ever really and if I did it was blown out <clears throat> so wearing my hair curly I had like my hair was super long in the back because I have really loose curls in the back and they always just drop so much faster so I basically just cut all my hair off I was like this is ridiculous we're not doing this I cut all my hair off in 2020 mind you started my natural hair journey in 2013 <clears throat> cut all my hair off in 2020 seven years had passed and I had little to no length to show for it the longest my hair got in seven years was like about here seven years and of course I thought it was normal I feel like a lot of people as we look back on pictures of ourselves we're like well seven ten years passed and I was taking care of my hair and my hair is still super short that just must be how my hair is and I thought that too and I was okay with it and I loved my hair my hair was soft it was cute and I was happy with it but I learned some things that I started to implement in 2020 here's a picture of my hair in 2020 and what happened was as we all know I you know the pandemic happened I worked from home which gave me a lot more flexibility when it came to doing my hair I did a lot of protective styling. I would flat twist my hair. I would put in twists. And because I do my own twists, I would put them in for like three to four weeks, take them out, do them again. I was still trying my wash and goes. I was still doing different things. I did finger coils. Um, and you know, I was kind of just figuring things out for myself. At this point, I was very, I was pretty consistent. I would wash my hair twice a week and I still do. So in 2020, I would wash my hair twice a week. At this point, I would pre-poo sometimes, not always. I would shampoo my hair, use a deep conditioner. At this point, I'm no longer using conditioners. So I'd use a deep conditioner. I would dry my hair, get out of the shower, put in a leave-in, twist or braid my hair, sleep overnight, and then spray my hair with water in the morning to do my wash and go. And I did that because I didn't have a method of drying my hair before going to bed. And even if I did, my wash and goes never lasted the night. So I said, cheat code, just do it in the morning, air dry all day, your hair will be dry by the time you go to bed. So that was my wash and go routine. Um, I also saw that with my wash and goes, I would basically use a bunch of products to prevent them from like frizzing day two um there was one time in the summer where my hair would not last the night like at all so i was using whatever leave-in i was using i think i was using the suave leave-in around that time i have a bunch of different products so i was using a bunch of products but let's say i was using the suave leave-in i would top that with eco olive oil i would top that with wet lime and then i would top that with aunt jackie's don't shrink and I was getting like three to five day hair. And that's what I was doing for the longest. If I needed to like restyle my hair, I would. I would just wet it and put more gel on it. So I had all these products on my hair. Yes, I was shampooing, but I was using really moisturizing shampoos. And so after a while, I was just like, you know, I was going about my business. I was doing whatever. Um, I was still doing really excessive trimming because every time I would take out one of my protective styles, my ends would be dry and raggedy. So I was, I remember one um, winter I cut like almost two inches off because I had done braids on my hair. And when I took the braids out, my ends were terrible. So after a while, I stopped doing braids, just twists. And over time, I'm using more products, I'm enjoying myself. I used the Head & Shoulders Royal Oil Shampoo. The original shampoo from that line has sulfates in it. Not gonna lie, that completely changed 
the way my hair responded to product because it was finally clean. It was finally clean. My hair was finally like, all that product that was on my hair was gone. And of course I still deep condition, um, moisturizing condi deep conditioners, protein deep conditioners, so my hair was conditioned. My wash and go started looking so much better after that. And I started leaning more into just wearing my hair in wash and goes. At some point in this time, I went ginger with box dye. Mind you, before when I had bleached my hair with box dye, it was ruined. Now I could go even lighter and still do wash and goes with my hair. So I loved my ginger era. It was so pretty, so cute. And really, I just kind of let my hair grow out. I had a really bad experience with faux locks and that was kind of my last straw for protective styles. And so after those faux locks, I'll put the date somewhere here, I haven't gotten a protective style. I don't, you know, I don't do flat twists anymore because what happens is I just end up putting a wig cap and then a scarf over and then that really dries out my hair. But I used to do, I used to do mini twists all the time. I don't do those anymore because those also really dry up my hair. My hair was used to being washed twice a week and infused with all this moisture. Going a week, two weeks without anything was just not good for my hair. At this point, you know, I'm still doing my wash and goes. I have my mini twists. But where I really started to see a lot of length retention was when I stopped and I realized what's working. Cleansing my hair with sulfates every once in a while, right? That shampoo, I completely finished the bottle because I loved it so much. Cleansing my hair, deep conditioning. I would sometimes deep condition outside of the shower or I would deep condition in the shower. Another thing that seriously turned it around for me was applying my leave-in in the shower. And all of the things that I'm doing are just allowing my hair to be more moisturized. And on the shower, I wasn't letting my hair dry out in between steps. And on top of that, I still didn't really have a detangling routine, like I was using the little tangle teaser, and I'll get into that a little later, but I was doing things a lot differently. I was allowing my hair to be wet, I was allowing my hair to be moisturized. And on top of that, I was basically just doing wash and goes at this point. Now I know that a lot of people don't think of wash and goes as low maintenance styles, but for me, I do a wash and go, and then I wash my hair four days later. That's pretty much it. Like I don't really do much else. When my hair was longer, I really didn't do anything. But when my hair is shorter like this, I might put an oil on it, put a refresher spray on it, and then pick it out. And then I, I don't touch my hair until I wash it. When I was doing twist outs, I was retwisting my hair and adding product every night. And for me, that really like tore into my hair because I actually can't do that much with my hair until it starts to break. My hair is very breakage prone. For me, wash and goes allow me to let go of some of that like mechanical breakage because I'm, I'm not really touching my hair as much as I used to. Forward, my hair is growing. I was tired of the ginger and I wanted to try something new. I also wanted to cut my hair. I love cutting my hair. And I said, let's go blonde because if I get damaged, I'll just cut it off. I ended up being blonde for a year and I loved it. I literally saw the most length retention when I was blonde. I will try to, I have um, a short on my page that shows my hair in the year of 2023. I'm gonna just quickly show, this is my hair with my first wash and go. And that was probably the longest my hair had gotten in about seven years. This was my hair bleach blonde after growing it for three years. And it, it was, that was like the longest my hair's ever been. My hair was happy, it was hydrated. Now, I did have issues with chemical breakage and mechanical breakage because I got, as I got a little lazy with my hair care. I realized that I was able to do just a little bit and get exactly the look that I wanted from my wash and goes. So although I was doing all the steps, I was cleansing my hair, deep conditioning, putting in the leave-in, doing wash and goes, I wasn't caring for my hair. And that's where mindset comes in. 
If I think of my hair care as pampering myself, I will take a couple extra minutes, right? And for me, what I saw was when my hair was longer and it took not as much effort, I was ha I had the, the like 30, 40 minute wash days. I could do a wash and go in like 15 minutes tops, right? There's a video I think where I dyed my hair pink for the Barbie premiere. I did my wash and go in like five minutes because I could. That does not mean that's what's best for my hair. Now when my hair is shorter, it takes longer to do my wash and goes, but I'm learning that there are certain things that I've picked up along the way, certain mistakes that I've made that I can implement going forward. So what I'm doing in 2024 to grow my hair out and retain as much length as possible is basically following the same routine. I'm gonna go through my routine. I'm gonna show you some of the products that I'll be using, but mind you, I'm going through a product stash journey, so I'll be using a bunch of different products this year. And that's kind of the point that I'm trying to make. It is not a specific product. It's how I'm using the products and the consistency that I have when I use them. So I wash my hair basically twice a week, every three to five days. I do wash and goes and I have bleach bond hair. This is the longest that my hair has been with it being bleached and doing wash and goes. I just cut my hair recently because I had chemical breakage and mechanical breakage. Both of them were my fault. I've dealt with it. I've mourned the loss <laughs> of my hair and I'm just growing it back out again. I will say though, from when I cut my hair till now, I think it's been three or four months and I'm already seeing so much growth because I finally have a routine that I can lean into and I'm finally starting to approach my hair with the care and concern that it deserves. Not that I wasn't, not that I was being like rough with my hair, I just wasn't being patient with my hair. I wasn't taking the time, you know? I love having, you know, the 30 minute wash day, the 15 minute wash and goes. I can finish my wash day in less than an hour. But what I'm talking about in terms of like taking time is going from an hour wash day to an hour, hour and a half, hour 45. It's not that much more time, but it makes a difference. So my wash day always starts with pre-pooling. I was really inconsistent with pre-pooling and I thought that I could skip it, but going into the shower and just wetting my hair will always make it tangled. Also, I always do my hair in four sections. I love having my hair down in the shower. And I will still do it from time to time. Now that my hair is short, I shampoo and just, I shampoo in one big section because it's easier. I can't really section my hair that easily. But when my hair is longer, I do everything in four sections because for me, that helps me focus on my scalp, my, like those strands of my hair and my ends very precisely. So I will pre-poo with either a moisturizing or a protein pre-poo. Protein is in everything that I do because my hair is bleach blonde. One of the, I either use a protein pre-poo like this. This is the Cream of Nature Plex Break It's Defense Step 1. Love this stuff. Or I will use literally any moisturizing shampoo. Anything with slip, it does not matter. Right now I'm going through the Suave Sun Ripen Strawberry. And this is that. I've used the African Pride pre-poo. Um, I have a deep conditioner from Sorenzo Beauty that I use sometimes. That's more of a nourishing deep conditioner, um, even though I do use it as a pre-poo. Or um, something that I've been starting to implement, I've only used it twice, is a DIY avocado hair mask that I use as a pre-poo. But no matter what, I pre-poo my hair and I detangle my hair. I spray it with um, aloe vera juice and I just go through and I detangle my hair before I get in the shower. Then I get in the shower. I either have my four sections or one is short, all in one section. And I've actually started to shampoo twice. I usually don't because when my hair was longer, I was basically just using the Camille Rose Curl Maker and the Kinky Curly Curling Custard. Both of those, there's like no buildup when I use those products. Now that I'm going through and 
going through my stash something like this like the Aunt Jackie's curl boss I need to wash my hair twice to get this out so I've been washing my hair twice either with a, either a protein shampoo like the cream of nature plex breakage defense step two or a moisturizing shampoo like the moisture miracle African pride honey and coconut oil shampoo I also have more clarifying shampoos that actually have sulfates in it so this has sulfates in it the vo5 strawberries and cream shampoo love this stuff i'll usually go in once once or twice with this um usually just once or something that's more clarifying and doesn't have sulfates is the adua beauty blue tansy clarifying shampoo and this also has protein in it so there's something in every single step of the way that has protein in it. Everything that I use has protein in it. So at this point, I've pre-pooed, I've shampooed, and now I deep condition. I, even when my hair is short, I deep condition in four sections to make sure that I'm getting the most out of my deep conditioner. I completely wet the section. I apply deep conditioner from roots to ends. What I'll do is I'll divide my hair into smaller sections just use my hands. I'm no longer using a tool unless I'm using a product that works best on damp hair. Like if I'm using a curl cream that works best on damp hair, I need my hair to be completely detangled so I don't do any like damage to my hair. So I will go through and finger rake everything in, apply deep conditioner all over and in that little section, apply a little bit more deep conditioner to my ends, and then I will let it sit for a little bit, depending on how long it takes. So if I'm using a deep conditioner and it says leave in for 10 to 15 minutes, I'll just detangle my hair in the shower, that's about 10 to 15 minutes. If it says like 20 minutes or more, I might get out of the shower, I might not. Um, I very rarely step out of the shower to deep condition. It just doesn't happen often. I've started to make the choice of stepping out of the deep conditioner one or two times a month just for that like extra you know to pamper my hair a little very rarely step out of the shower to do my deep conditioner so once my whole head is deep conditioned i also go in put more deep conditioner like on my parts on my edges at the nape of my hair on my ends covered coated in deep conditioner and i'm not using that much more deep conditioner I'm just being more mindful with my placement and I'm being more gentle by only finger detangle. And with deep conditioner, I either have a moisturizing deep conditioner, a balanced deep conditioner with, which has protein and moisture or just more strengthening ingredients or a specific protein deep conditioner. The deep conditioner that I'm using right now um, is the Adjua Beauty Blue Tansy Reparative Mask. It's literally almost done. And the Mish Peaches and Cream Limited Edition Deep Conditioner. I have um, another one in the shower that's almost done. And then, like I said before, I'm working on this little pillow pack. But I, I try to save this for, like, not special events, but, like, I just try to save it because I like it so much. The Myel Rosemary and Mint Deep Conditioning Mask. So, no matter what, like I said, there's always protein in my routine. Now I will say that when I first went blonde, I did give myself protein overload, overload, which is so funny because I bleached my hair. I used protein products every single wash day for like a month and a half. And my hair got so hard because everything I used had protein in it. So now I usually do like a protein pre-poo and a protein shampoo and a moisturizing deep conditioner or a moisturizing pre-poo, a protein shampoo, and a balanced deep conditioner. Like I kind of switch it up a little bit, but every time I wash my hair, I'm putting protein in my hair. But after I'm done deep conditioning, <clears throat> something that I do now, and something that I learned earlier this year when I was styling my hair, is that I can basically define my hair with my leave-in, which allows my hair to be more moisturized and still have that nice definition. So what I do is after I've rinsed out my deep conditioner, I make sure my hair is soaking wet and I basically apply my leave-in like I would my deep conditioner 
from roots to ends. I finger detangle, make sure everything's in there. I add more water as needed. I basically apply leave-in until my hair is defined. I apply additional leave-in on the ends and then I will twist that section up and clip it away. And I do that with all four sections. So when I get out of the shower, my hair is basically dripping wet with leave-in and wet with water and leave-in. And then when I get out of the shower, I put a plastic cap on. My hair has 10 to 15 minutes to just soak in as much as it can. And then I style my hair. Sometimes my hair is still wet enough to not spray anything. I have aloe vera juice in my spray bottle. Sometimes I'll mix it with water, but it's usually aloe vera juice. And then I'll just do my wash and go. I go section by section, applying gel, and then so when my hair is shorter i like to do finger coils but when my hair is longer i just rake it through and then i shake my hair and then everything just kind of separates on its own um my favorite gels of all time i just realized i forgot to show you the leave-ins that i use so the leave-ins that i use are looser textured like I like really creamy, gloopy leave-ins. I found that I didn't really care for how thicker textured products felt on my hair. Even though when my hair looked like this throughout my entire life, when I would watch people on YouTube, they say, well, type four hair works better with thicker products. I said, bet, that makes perfect sense. And I would use it and my hair would be soft but I would see someone, you know, also with type 4 hair using like a looser product and they'd be like, well, it doesn't moisturize my hair as much. But I'd be looking at that product and I'm like, that looks so like, literally just the texture, not even how it performs. I was like, ooh, it looks so soft. And I would put it in my hair and I loved it. And looser, like, looser textured leave-ins move through my hair very nicely and they pair really well with water which is what i use all the time to do my wash and goes a lot of the leave-ins that i use are either like looser or they're like right in the medium where they're not like super thick and, and super loose so some of my favorite leave-ins my favorite leave-in right now is a kinky curly not today i love it this is my second bottle this is like it doesn't really move in the bottle but it's like really nice the Mixed Chicks Leave-In Conditioner. This is my second bottle. This stuff, I can define my hair with this, which is really nice. The Main Choice H2O Hydration Therapy Intensive Leave-In Conditioner. This is probably the coolest leave-in I've ever used. I've had, I'll see if I can put like a video of me with like dry hair with this product, but my hair was so soft and so defined i like it's products like this that make me want to get through my stash i want to finish everything in my stash so that i can reach for this whenever i want you know what i mean and the last leave-in that i've been using is the myel pomegranate and honey leave-in conditioner i used this in the shower and i dropped it and the top came off but basically it's leave-ins like this that make me want to finish everything in my stash so that I can only use these. That's why. That's what I want from my product stash. I wanna reach and pick a favorite and know that all I have to pick from are favorites. But going back to the gels, my favorite gels of all time are the Camille Rose Curl Maker. Love the stuff, this is a brand new one. I have two new ones that I'm saving because I wanna get through all the other gels in my stash. And I have the Kinky Curly Curling Custard. This is my second container of this. I've used a lot of these. I'm gonna go through my list and let you know how many I've used. And then another favorite that I didn't know was a favorite until recently was the Twisted Sista Amazing Dream Curl Gel. Love this stuff. This is like, I don't know if you can hear that. It's a really loose textured gel. I just feel like at the beginning of my route at the beginning of my journey I thought that heavier products were better but these 
looser products, I think what makes them different is that it's it's just a lot of water, it's a lot of moisturizing products. Now for me specifically, I'm going for elongation and definition. And to get that, I like my hair to be wet and moisturized. I know that's not everybody's goals for wash and goes, but for me, that's my goal and that also helps me with length retention because my hair is always moisturized, my ends are always moisturized, and I don't have to touch my hair. Once my hair is done, like for example, if I use the Kinky Curly Knot Today and the Kinky Curly Curling Custard, just these two products, I can get a four, five, six day wash and go, put a bonnet on at night, take my bonnet off in the morning, shake it out, and just go about my business. That is significantly less manipulation than anything else I could do with my hair and that's why it works so well for me. And so that's basically my wash and style routine that I'm gonna be doing in 2024 and beyond. And anything else I do, like I do either air dry my hair or I'll diffuse or sit under my hoodie dryer. I always use heat protectant and I use the Cantu Thermal Shield. I've been using this for years, it's the only heat protectant I use. But other than that, nothing else I mention is for care. Most of it is either to <clears throat> scrunch the crunch and make my hair smell nice, or it's to do my edges. And that's pretty much it. I just pre-poo, shampoo, deep condition, put on a leave-in, and put on a gel. And my hair is good for like three to six days. That's it. The only difference is I'm taking more care, I'm moving slower, and I'm specifically putting product on my ends. And probably one of the bigger differences is that I'm not using any tools. I always flip-flop between finger detangling and using some sort of tool. Now, if I need to detangle my hair, I'll use a wide tooth comb. I no longer use a tangle teaser because the last time I used a tangle teaser, I got so excited to use it that I literally like ripped a chunk of hair out back here. It was terrible, but I'm just being very gentle with my hair. When I part my hair, I try to make sure there's no hair borrowing because as I'm raking through, that's when hair gets ripped. So I'm just being more careful. Nothing new, nothing really different. Just consistency, being gentle, using as much water as I need to, and just making sure my hair is moisturized at all times. Something else that I'm doing is I'm changing the way I trim. This is the most experimental part of what I'm doing. So I cut my hair in August, I did a trim this month or last month, and it felt like I cut a lot of hair, but my hair was actually just really even. Like now, when I touch my hair, I can feel how even it is. And it's it feels really nice. And I feel like that unevenness makes it really difficult to like section my hair or be careful with my hair because I have all these different lengths. And I feel like when you have long hair and then short hair, the short hair causes tangles higher up. And because I'm trying to take even better care of my ends, my goal is to trim my hair less often. I basically trim, do the little twist and trim every month or every two and a half months. That is very often. That's very often. My goal is to kind of get to one to three times a year doing that trim and hopefully that being all I need. To give you some uh, reference, my hair grows four inches from the scalp every year. That's way more than I thought it used to. It's lower than the average, but for me, perfect. I trim or lose to breakage on average an inch every year. So on average, I retain three inches a year. Cool. Knowing that I am also cutting probably almost an inch a year is helping me be like, hmm, if I could take better care of my ends and cut less off because I don't need to cut as much, I can also help myself retain more. If I reduce breakage and I reduce the amount that I need to trim, I can retain more length. 
So that's my plan. Very experimental. Trimming is up in the air because I do it myself. So I like try a bunch of different stuff. So right now that's what I'm trying. So just to recap everything that I've talked about and what my goal to retain as much length as possible is, I'm going to pre-poo with either a moisturizing or a protein pre-poo. I will shampoo with either a clarifying shampoo, moisturizing, or protein shampoo. Deep conditioners. I deep condition every single time. I'm going to be deep conditioning in sections, paying particular attention to my ends with either a moisturizing, balanced, or protein deep conditioner. I'm going to be applying my leave-ins in the shower, always, 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 defining my hair mostly with my leave-in. So when I get out of the shower and apply my gel, I can use less gel. I still get longevity with my wash and goes. I don't have to touch my wash and goes. There's less manipulation with my wash and goes. And my hair just gets to be for four or five days. There's any tools on my hair as of right now. I make sure that I always have heat protected on my hair no matter what. I wanna take very good care of my ends so I don't have to get rid of them. And that is my goal. So my goal for 2024, other than to finish as many products as possible, and I know this goal is like, probably won't be reached, but my goal is to grow my hair almost back to what it was before I cut it this year. I know it's probably not gonna happen, but if I just think it'll happen, let's see how close I can get. Let's see. So I would love to know what you're doing to grow your hair out in 2024, if that's something you're interested in. Let me know your thoughts on your natural hair journey, what it looked like before, what it looks like now, how it's different, if it's even different from what you were doing before. I just wanna hear more about what you're doing for your hair. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.